I am Liz Leung, and I am the Deputy Project Scientist and Pluto Encounter Planning Lead on NASA's New Horizons mission to Pluto. My mind reeled when I realized it's been 25 years since the discovery of Pluto's atmosphere. I was a fresh thing right out of college on a flight on NASA's Kuiper Airborne Observatory. We had a telescope on a cargo plane, and there it was, five minutes that changed my life. Made it here, too. Now, there you go. Hey, wow, okay. I think that thing has an atmosphere, guys. Yeah, yeah, atmosphere. I landed. My younger brother called me and said, how does it feel to make all the textbooks obsolete? And you know what? It feels pretty good. I cut my teeth doing this very time-critical kind of observation, uh, stellar occultations, and you have to plan things carefully in advance. Even as a student going to ground-based telescopes, my advisor would say it's worth taking four hours of planning for every hour at the telescope. So we're taking six years of planning for eight months of observations. It's about the same ratio. We've already begun getting science from New Horizons on Pluto. Just two weeks ago, we got images where we separate Pluto and Charon. Big deal, we've actually been able to separate Pluto and Charon from the Hubble Space Telescope and other telescopes on the Earth, but location, location, location. Then in 2015, we'll be getting the orbits of all the satellites starting in January. Do that for a few months. By about three months before closest approach, we'll be getting uh, better observations from Pluto than Hubble will get. That means that each image comes down, it's the best ever image of Pluto, and then the next day, what do you know, the best ever image of Pluto again. And then things really get hot and heavy. Pluto takes six and a half days to rotate, so as we come in we'll see one side of Pluto, then another, and then starting at about 12 hours before Pluto, we get Pluto filling an entire lorry frame, and we get our best uh, infrared images, our best color images, then closest approach, we get fabulous high resolution noodles, high resolution strips with some good context, medium resolution observations of both Pluto and Charon. As we fly by, we also look at the satellites, then we fly into the shadow. If I'm the sun, there's the shadow of the sun and Earth going behind Pluto. We fly into the shadow of Pluto, looking back at the sun, getting this narrow crescent only 40 kilometers of Pluto sunlit in this narrow crescent into the shadow of Charon, looking for the atmosphere on Charon. And then it's a long year of just getting the data down. One of the things that's fun about Pluto is it's such a mystery to figure out anything. You have to pull together these clues from surface spectra or occultations of the atmosphere. My name is Leslie Young, and I'm a Plutophile because I love a good puzzle.